What is up, guys, and welcome back to another Odd Popcorn for that review. I'm Chris. I'm Nick. And today we're here to talk about a movie called The Skin I Live In. So this came out in 2011. Uh, it's a Spanish movie, and it was directed by Pedro Almodovar. Uh, and it stars. Uh, it primarily stars Antonio Banderas and uh, Elena Anaya. Elena Anaya. Uh, and this is, I gotta tell you, this is a crazy movie, and uh, a lot of this is gonna have to be spoilers, so personally, I recommend this movie. What did, what did you think about this movie? I recommend it as well. It is a wild movie. I didn't know, it, like most of the movies we watch, I didn't know really anything about it going into it, and mm -hmm. uh, it definitely surprised me. It was pretty crazy. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't even think I read the description on this movie before I watched it. So yeah, I just remember uh, seeing like a trailer for it years ago whenever it came out and being like, oh, I kind of want to watch that. But having been a while since I'd seen the trailer, I didn't even remember what it was besides wanting to see it. There's a lot to be said about going into a movie not knowing anything about it, uh, especially when it's a wild ride like this. So uh, you know, like Barbarian uh, last year, I guess. Or whenever yeah, that came. I think that was last year. That was one I was really glad I like went into that knowing nothing about. Uh. But yeah, this is a, this is a crazy movie, and it makes me really want to check out this director's other works because yeah, definitely. Uh, he, this is a well-renowned director. I'm just you know painfully out of the loop with a lot of um, foreign film directors, so that's part of the point of the channel. But uh, yeah, this is nuts. So I'm, I'm going to try to give you a, like the briefest of synopsis, but it's it can only go so far because it's it's really hard not to spoil what's happening here, and we will do that, but we'll warn you. But uh, but yeah, I like this movie a lot. Um, it's just, it's impressive how, how much you can still surprise me. Yeah. Um, but but basically, uh, Antonio Banderas plays Robert Ledger, Ledgard, mm -hmm. and he is it's he seems to be a well renowned plastic surgeon. Like he gives you know he's given these lectures and speeches and stuff, and and he's worked a lot with um, face tra specifically with face transplants, but also like burn victims, skin and a lot, grafts, lots of yeah. Yeah, he's the, but I mean he is a plastic surgeon, so but he has this you know a lot of specialties and and he like he was involved in three of the four face transplants that have ever been performed and ten and uh, oh is it ten? Mm -hmm. Three of the ten, or am I wrong about both? Yeah, no, it was three of the ten. Okay, I thought he was, yeah for some reason I thought it was only four. Anyways, but uh, but so he's the big the big. You know the the thing that's happening in this movie is that he's developed this um, this kind of skin 2.0 that's the, uh, made to um, be you know be resistant to specifically burns, but also like insect bites and um, it's just like super skin uh, essentially. And he calls it Gal, I want to say. Yeah, G A L. And uh, and he says that he's tested it on mice, but. Um, someone someone calls him out on that and uh and says that they you know they didn't know that he's been testing it on a human so the, this is all intercut with us meeting a woman wearing a and the movie really opens with her but a woman wearing like a full body suit that's like pretty much flesh tone body suit and you think that you know the i it, you you can kind of discern that the idea is she's probably wearing this uh, as like an extra layer of protection from skin that's not completely healed yet. Yeah. I you know what I don't even know I don't know how much further we can go without. I what, mean, what is there to say without spoiling what's happening? Here? Yeah, I this mean, is a a really good movie. It's very strange. Uh, but we both recommend it. You should watch it if you're. I mean, it's it's yeah. a renowned filmmaker as well. But I think we're gonna have you into spoilers pretty quick. Yeah, because. I want to say, you know, the story is given to you in a certain way, but, you know, without getting lost in every detail, every minute of this movie, I kind of just want to tell you the grand thing. So if you're somebody that's never going to watch this, I guess, keep watching. But otherwise, we highly recommend this. Uh, but but basically what's going on, so spoilers from here on, but basically the point is, you know, you get the idea that this woman that is living with, you know, she's basically like... It, it becomes clear pretty early she's kind of a captive of yeah. um, the doctor. Antonio Banderas. Antonio Banderas. And uh, 
and there's a like there's an odd dynamic with the uh live in well there there's like a there's like a uh, staff of i guess servants for lack of a better word yeah because he lives but in like an old it's got to be like an old like not necessarily fortress but old like mansion or something like that it's definitely been there for a while but i mean he's, yeah, it's, a, it's he's a rich wealthy house. doctor mm-hmm. but he's uh i actually can't remember exactly why he sends all the staff away except that uh Oh no, I do. Yeah. So that you know that he's he's accused of uh by this doctor after the speech of not just using mice, but like I know you're I know you're using this on someone and he forbids him from ever continuing to do that again. He'll lose his license, he'll never be a doctor again, and uh just bans him from doing that anymore. And obviously he's gonna carry on. But uh uh, uh let's see. So so because okay, yeah. Because of his worry about that doc I want to say doctor. I assume that was yeah. another doctor that said it. Uh, because of his concern about him putting a stop to what he's doing, he kinda is is going extra private and uh and sends all the other servants away besides um what's her name? Mar Marilia? Yeah. Marilia. That's like his head servant lady basically. Mm hmm So he sends them all away and then um you know a couple things happen like for so the i guess the first like major event that happens is uh this man comes to their house when i can't remember where robert is but when robert's away and uh he's dressed in a tiger costume and the woman uh marilia uh recognizes him and realizes that this this is her son that she hasn't seen in years and she didn't recognize him in the tiger costume and it's actually that he has just like been part of this huge robbery and the police are uh police are after him i think people were killed yeah i think because the way it's explained is the one of the uh jewelry store clerks was in on it and was supposed to turn off the cameras he didn't turn off one camera so they ended up killing him because he left it on so we find all this she's already let him in because it's her son but we find all this out about him being on the run and the and the murders and all this after he's already inside the house and uh she's trying to prevent him from finding out about uh we don't say i didn't say her name yet but uh her name's vera this person who's like captive in the house basically kept in this room with all these cameras and everything and so she's she's panicking because she doesn't she doesn't trust her son not to just murder her. i mean like the, you know this may be her son but he's completely unhinged this character's crazy the acting is the acting is over the top on this guy um and it almost parts of this reminded me of possession, uh, possession in a way. I don't know how to explain. Does that make any sense to you? Mm, Something about the like the know. manicness of parts of this, but maybe. Yeah. Um, but so she's trying to prevent him from finding out about her, and he sees her on the security camera footage, and things get crazy pretty fast. Like he finds the room that she's in, finds the key. He's uh he he like threatens you know, threatens his mother, ties her up, gags her, and finds the room that she's in and essays her uh, very, in a, in a crazy, crazy scene in this tiger costume and everything. And then when Robert comes home, the, when uh, Dr. Ludgard comes home, he sees on the security camera footage uh, her being assaulted by uh, this man who he knows, but we'll get into i mean we'll get into something there but he knows this man but uh i don't know if he recognizes him in the moment or just does this out of the fact that it's, there's some crazy person having sex with uh vera in the you know in this room but mm -hmm. he sees that on the security camera footage busts in with a gun kills him you know right i mean it, this all happens pretty quick and the conversation between uh vera and marilia afterwards is where we get a lot of explanation about what's happening here so um we know that i think you know that pretty early on that robert's wife has died but you don't know how or you know what what the scenario surrounding that is but she confesses to um and it doesn't seem like she likes her very much so i'm not sure why she's confessing this to her but she confesses to vera that um both of these people are her sons so in one case, you know, uh, 
the, I can't. I, what, what's his name? The guy in the tiger. I can't remember his name. Well, Z- Zeko. Z- Zika. Zeko. Zeka or Zika. Yeah, not uh, not Zika. Zeka. Zeka. Something like that. Uh, he and uh, the doctor Robert are uh, are brothers and don't know it. So she's both of their mothers, but. Uh, he might know it, but Robert doesn't know that. He thinks that he, she was just like the maid that raised him all through his life. She basically like had this baby with. Did, she had the baby with the like the head so, of the house. Yeah, the head of the house, right? who is Robert's father, is. I don't know if he's a doctor, but Mister Ledgard, because his wife was barren, basically. And, and she claimed she claimed they like took once the baby. he was born. She, yeah, they they took the baby and said that she had had him and everything. And, yeah. And but she was, you know, his mom really got a chance to raise him, and uh, so she tells him tells him all that, and then she says she says, you know, uh, my uh, Zeka Zika Zeka he Zeka he uh, you know he ran off and smuggled drugs at a really young age, and he was from really early age he was out on the streets, and I just saw him, you know, once in a while, but um, when or not even once in a while, like he was absent for a really, really really long time. And then, uh, Robert became a, this very successful doctor and everything got married to this woman. And then, uh, the brother, uh, Zeka shows up and basically runs off with Robert's wife and they get in this terrible car accident and the car bursts into flames and she's trapped in this burning car. And he thinks she's, uh, Zeka thinks she's dead, runs off and Robert, is the one that discovers her there, saves her, and st- spends all this time and energy uh, tending to her wounds and, you know, trying to fix her skin and everything. And that's like, part of the reason, like, this whole project, that's kind of the reason this whole project of making, like, the super skin started. Am I right about that? Like, that's yeah. the catalyst that sort of... So he started making the super skin to... But, but uh, you know, he's got her to a certain point where she can start to, you know, move a little bit, but things aren't things aren't right. Yeah, she, she kind of doesn't look right. Yeah, she kind of looks like Deadpool. Yeah, a little bit. And and the uh, Marilia says something I thought was interesting. Like they had to live like vampires, so there's no windows open, no mirrors in the house. Uh, so she's like prevented from seeing herself, and then um, something happens where she. I, th- I think she hears her daughter singing a song she taught her. Yeah. When. Uh, when when, the, when she was a little girl and it makes her feel emotions and she's been so like dead inside and emotionless for so long it that provokes her to get up to the window and she sees her own reflection in the window and is startled by how you know inhuman she looks and everything and in in a moment of just crazed I don't know you know in a, in a, in a moment a heated moment she jumps out the window and kills herself and right in front of her daughter and her daughter sees that and so that just messes her daughter all all kinds of up, and uh, and this is where things start to get really insane because there's like a wedding. This well, is like a so it, it explains that, and then this is a weird part too. It's like after the whole scenario of killing Zeka, like Marilia cleans up all the sheets. Uh, Robert gets rid of the body, comes back and like throws some blankets in the fire, and Marilia and Vera are like sitting by the fire. He's like, all right, come inside. And this is, like, the first time Vera's been allowed to roam the house or have any so- sort of freedom whatsoever while she's been yeah. there. And so they, like, go up to the bedroom, and they're both naked, and he's, like, kissing on her, which is really, you know, st- strange considering what just happened to her. And then, like, they go to make love, and she's like, oh, I'm I'm in pain. I can't. Well, tomorrow. And yeah, they like kind of mess, mess me up too bad. I got to. Yeah. And then they kind of they kind of fall asleep in each other's arms. And then it goes into like this dream sequence of Antonio Banderas of like him, a memory of what had happened. And I guess they're both. We, we go into both of their dreams that night. Yes. I suppose. But it starts because... it starts with Antonio Banderas because it's two different like versions of what happened because it's the same night. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and uh but Antonio you don't Banderas. know this. Watching in the movie, you'd, I mean, unless you're really perceptive, a lot more than me or something, you don't. I, I didn't fully understand what was happening until the movie for sure wanted me to know. Yeah. Like, I wasn't piecing it together. I don't know about you. A little bit, but there was other parts, too, where I was like, no, this can't be this. But, yeah, they are at, like, a wedding at some, like, well-to-do area, and Antonio Banderas and his daughter are there, and she's, like, off to the corner hanging out with a bunch of kids her age. 
Looks, looks like she's having a good time. Yeah. And somebody and, comments on like that's the first time she's looked. You know, like is she getting better? It looks like she's, you know, getting along well with with everybody and wh- whatnot. So it, you know, she looks happy in that moment, and it, they're commenting on the fact that like she she hasn't been she's like scared of people and hasn't been happy like this. So. Mm-hmm. And then I think from there it pretty much goes to like Antonio Banderas like kind of notices she's missing from the party, and then he goes outside and goes to this like garden area where there's just like this kind of orgy I guess going on not in some more sense. or less yeah all these kids yeah everybody's everybody's having sex everywhere yeah and then he kind of he doesn't see his daughter there and then he keeps walking through these gardens and like trips over her high heels and like sees her laid against a tree like unconscious. And he goes to wake her up, and she like he sees uh, this motorcycle driving off, and then he goes to wake her up, and she just immediately is like freaking out and incoherent. Yeah, just panicking. Yeah, and I think that's the end of his dream, right? I don't think it is, because I think from there it shows he takes her to like a mental, uh, psychiatric hospital, and he's like mm. visit visiting her there, and like he goes to like, hey, it's me, it's your dad, and he touches her, and she just screams, jumps in the closet, and the doctor. And you kind of come to find out she'd probably been in the psychiatric hospital like most of her life after seeing her mother's death. Because the, right. doc- the doctor kind of says, you know, you shouldn't have taken her out. And then she I don't it's exa- made I don't her know worse. how much time passed from – yeah. I'm not sure they're clear about how much time passes from her mother's death to um, – well, I don't know how much time passes from the the events of that wedding night to when we see her in the – hospital yeah either um, but, yeah it doesn't really say but i think that's but, kind uh, of the end of his like memory dream sequence yeah and so the movie takes us back to the bed that they're sleeping in and it goes from his head like we're you know reminding you that we're in his dream and over to her head and she's having a memory of well how does her memory start i think it starts at it's the like wedding. this no it's like this family owns this uh Dress shop. dress shop and they're all working on dresses and stuff and they're uh it's like a mother and son and then one employee there that's like um this lesbian woman that works there Christ- christina or something like christine yeah and then it shows yeah up, and there's, I guess... there's there's like a little flirting between uh there's a little flirting between the son and the lesbian well not between them <laughs> one way flirting uh at the lesbian employee and the and the son uh like he's always wanted to be with her and she she only likes women or whatever so there's like a little joke about that am I, am I, is that the is that yeah the i think so on? okay and then he says something about like some dress that she made a comment on and that they were working on together or something yeah she says if you like it so much you should just why don't you just wear it yeah and then and i then, think that uh, uh, he makes his way to the party with his friends or the the wedding yeah so he does he crash the wedding, or I'm not sure if he's. I don't like think he a crashes really invited it. Guest. I don't know if he's necessarily invited. I think somebody he's with is invited, though, because I mean, they're with a he's with the group of kids. Right. Well, and so he's he's with these guys, and you for, now now you see that like all of these people are are all messed up on drugs at this wedding. Yeah. And uh, and there's like a little bit of flirting between uh, him and. And his What's name the is name again? Uh, no, uh, Nora or Noah. I think it's Nora, and then his, I think his name's uh, Vincente. Yeah, Vincente. So there's a little bit of flirting between them, and he's like, they, everybody goes to leave, and all his friends go off without him, and she's like, oh, all your friends are leaving you, and he's he's like, yeah, yeah, probably better that way, you know? Why don't we just why don't we just go off? And and it's a little unclear if she's how how into anything that's happening she is because um, yeah, she seems a little disassociated. And it kind of yeah, she's like not involved, and it, and it explains why though. Yeah, it kind of makes it because he's walking with her and stuff, and he's like talking about how he's super high, and he's like, "Did you take any pills?" And she's starts naming these drugs that are like antipsychotics and anti anxiety and she's, stuff. She's listing off all the drugs that she's like prescribed. That, yeah. That since her mom's death, but he, he she doesn't really understand that he's like he's all messed up on drugs for the fun of it. He's yeah, he's he like takes, on ecstasy he or her. something. Yeah, and he takes her to mean like, oh, that's all the pills I'm on tonight. And he's like, oh man, yeah, I'm high too. Yeah, she's like, wait, and, high. Uh, and I mean, he's pretty aggressive, but it seems like she's kind of going along with it for it sort of. I mean, it's it's a complicated yeah. thing, but like they 
they start kissing and stuff and and it's a little unclear how into what's happening she is but she's definitely not like grossed out or trying to get away or anything like that and uh it took me i, I actually i wanted to re watch a couple parts of this so just just a few minutes ago i rewatched a couple little parts of this and i think what happens is she hears a song like they start to have sex and she hears a song that that's the song that was she was singing when her mother jumped out the window I oh think that's what's happening there. okay that makes sense so she kind of has and that so, like traumatic experience relived in her head there in that moment yes so i don't think that she this was the this was one of the main things i wanted to see again uh because i think that that's not what's what i thought initially is she just she just has a moment of realizing she, I, she doesn't want to be doing this right now yeah and freaks out and says no and then when he doesn't stop she freaks out even more and screams but I think it's it's her having that traumatic moment. She was she was having like a good day, in an otherwise clouded with psychotic epi- You know, like she's her life's been messed up since seeing her mom, and she's having a good day. And then the thing that brings her back is hearing that song. I'm pretty sure that's what happened, and we'll have to. Yeah, I think I think but, you're right. I didn't notice it, but now that I, I think I think that hears... song was playing. Mm-hmm. And so, um, and actually, uh. Well, anyway, that's not worth saying. But, um, but so she hears that song. Now it's become sort of a, an R word situation here, and uh, and he does stop, but he tries to stop her from screaming, and she's biting his hand and everything. And to get her to, in a, in, a, in a heated moment, to get her to stop screaming, he hits her, and uh, and she's out cold. Which I mean, it's just like a slap. It's kind of crazy. Maybe yeah. she's it's because she's on drugs or whatever. But he hits her, and now she's out cold. He fixes her clothes, and he leaves. So this is the state we. And also when they're when they're going off together, she's like, "I'm so claustrophobic in these clothes. Like I just I gotta get out of. The, I hate these high heels." She throws her high heels. She's like, "I hate this sweater." And she takes off her sweater and throws it. So it looks very like a salty type situation from the other perspective if you didn't see what led up to this because she's like literally throwing her clothes off mm-hmm. and I think he took it to me and like because she says like if it was up to me I'd just be naked all the time and he's like I'm pretty fine with that yeah I think he thought that like she was coming on to him and then that's what yeah. led it to him kissing her and then all that happening yeah and so you kind of see these perspectives and I'm not saying what happened there was right but it's like a it's like a it's an it's not as crazy it's not as like it looked like a much worse situation from from Antonio Banderas' perspective than it was, sort of. Yeah. It's tricky. I mean, I think what happened there was wrong, for sure. But, um... So, ultimately, I don't think that we really get a lot of information leading up to this. We just know that it happened. But, ultimately, her... She jumps out the window, just like her mom, and kills herself. Mm -hmm. And so, we're at the funeral. Well, am I skipping ahead at all? I think you're pretty spot on we're at the fu- we're at the funeral and uh i think basically her well, psychiatrist comes up and was like we're very sorry that this happened and he's like i'm suing you and your hospital which is like a minor part i'm and just then, trying to think of when the thing happens with the motorcycle and everything it happens after the funeral i believe if not okay. if it happens before the timing of it doesn't matter too much it's just that it happens yeah i mean the, yeah just to get to the to get to the point uh, yeah because yeah. antonio it basically it goes back to vincente and he's working at his shop again, and then he's like, I need some air. I'm going to go ride my motorcycle. So he takes off, and as soon as he takes off, like, this uh, van follows him, like, immediately. Mm-hmm. And starts to chase him down and speed up, speeds up, and then knocks him off of the road and uh, shoots knocks him with him a tra- the bike. Yeah. yeah, knocks him off the bike, shoots him with a train gun. And you can tell that it's Antonio Banderas, but he's definitely got, like, some prosthetics on. Yeah, he's got, like, a mask on, but it's funny. It kind of looks still sort of like Antonio Banderas. <laughs> Yeah, uh, but yeah, you can tell it's him. He throws him in the van and uh, and chains. You like he wakes up chained to the wall uh, with a bucket of water in front of him and no context. He's just he's got chains on his arms and it, and the thing is bolted to the wall, hardcore. And uh, what do we see next? I get so I could see at this point putting it together. Yeah, but I didn't fully quite yet put it together. I yeah, think I was. I hadn't either. I so one thing we didn't mention too is Antonio Banderas works out of his house, so he's got like a full lab set up and an operating room because he's he's a plastic surgeon, but he, he, I think they primarily work on people who are probably semi-famous or something like that who don't want people to know that they've had work done. So he's sure. got all this set up in his house. 
and he kind of comes down and like sprays Vincente down with water and is kind of being a little bit nicer to him, feeding him and stuff. And then yeah, he's uh, very like cold with him, but yeah, he, 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 at least he's at least he's giving him food and stuff. Yeah, and then he chloroforms him. He uh, well, he shaves he, he shaves him That's clean right. shaves him, and he's like, "Why are you shaving me?" And he's like, "That is a very good question." And then he puts the chloroform on the ray, chloroforms him, and then you see him take him to the operating theater and uh, and, and he tells. Now, this him is down. obviously, you know, once he's in the operating theater, I was like, "Oh, they are they're gonna do this." Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, he he tells the. Uh, the other surgeon that uh this guy wants a sex change operation and uh he's like he's just a boy you know are you sure he's ready to make that kind of decision he's like he's not a boy he's 27 he's a man and i've never seen anybody more sure he's it's got to go you know and so they do the sex change operation on him he, he wakes him up and tells him what's happened and <laughs> it is a crazy i mean can you yeah because he just wakes just, up and he's like what did you do to me and he's like <clears throat> all he says vaginoplasty vaginoplasty I'm like whoa I mean, I'm sitting here alone watching this movie, and I was like, <laughs> "Yeah, he, because because you're putting it together. I mean, he just tried to have sex with this woman. Yep, and he's dreaming about the like the night where his you know this this happened with his daughter and everything. Oof. And I was still Sorry. kind of like torn between until this point. I think really was like, huh, everything that's still happening. Like, did his daughter really commit suicide, or did he do this? like on his daughter and made her look this way because I don't know I don't remember if we mentioned it or not we might have but he the reason Zeko even sees her and like does anything is because he made Vera look exactly like his wife so he thinks that's her like he thinks that she lived Robert and has like he brought fixed her, her she lived and he like fixed her you know completely like fixed her skin completely but we kind of jump back to after the vaginoplasty Vincente kind of like opens the the robe and sees it and uh Antonio Banderas walks in and is like hey so you've got to do this to keep it open or otherwise you know you could think of this as like you're breathing otherwise you could die and he like lays yeah, out like these dilators yeah these dilators of different diameters and like he's like you gotta start with this go all the way up until blah 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 and then it goes back to him, I think, kind of on the table. And it's like, how long have you been able to have the biggest one in? It's like four weeks. He's like, that's perfect. It's great. We're done. Oh, well, actually, he – so if you remember, he he tells him about the dilators and everything and tells him about this this um, extra layer of protection. It, doesn't that happen right then? Maybe like so. He puts, the, he puts this black, like, bodysuit Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. on, and then he uh, – Oh, no. He, no, she... that's, that's not – that's not happened yet. Okay, okay. Because what happens is he's he's got him on the table and he's like, so we're done, right? And he's like, no, we're not done. And then basically the next time you see him, he's performed surgery over his entire body, giving him breasts, and like he's got scars all over his body where I guess he's like taken out muscle and just made him like a small, even because he was a smaller guy already, but made and him more feminine. replacing everything with the this, this super skin too, so like yeah. burn resistant insect repellent skin. and then that's when he gives him the bodysuit and it's like you've got to wear this to keep it all in place and make sure it stays there for like a long time and and uh and as soon as he gets the he gets the i don't think we have to call i don't think we got to call vincente a she because it wasn't a willing transition right yeah uh but but uh but yeah vera tries to tries to uh, attack him and and take the well, no, it doesn't take the gun, but tries to attack, uh, is able so, to attack him and like subdue him for a minute. Yeah, and then runs downstairs, and uh, Antonio Banderas has like this lock on a key, like a key fob, and it locks the front door. And Vincente Vera now grabs a knife, and he ha she has this weird thing over her face because he did reconstructive surgery on the face as well. Yeah, like the rubber. Yeah. Whatever it is. And at this point, face. she's got like real short hair, unlike the long hair she has when we first meet her. And she has mm -hmm. a knife she grabs from the kitchen, and she's like, come down here and I'll stab you. And then he pulls out a gun. She's like, I'll slit my own throat. Slits her throat. Yeah. He runs down, takes her to the operating room, stitches her up, and he's like, we got real lucky there. It's like, man. Well, and early on, you're, like, trying to figure out why this woman keeps trying to, like, 
kill herself or threatening to kill herself or her injure herself. Like, he finds, early on in the movie, he finds her with, like, slashes all over herself. And yeah. he just, he fixes all of them. But it's like, she's like, I'm just going to try it again. You know, and you don't, you don't know who this is to him yet. So it's like, doesn't make any, you know, doesn't fully make sense. But it's not, it's like the ultimate revenge on someone. <laughs> it's yeah. a crazy thing because he's, he's, it's crazy that he ultimately wants to have a relationship with like he made her so convincingly look like his wife that he's actually made himself want to have a relationship with this woman even though he knows who this really is yeah and, it, and, he, it, and he hates that person and it seems like she is cool with having a relationship with him like maybe you're mm-hmm. thinking like there's some stockholm syndrome going on like they make a promise to each other that she you know she no more locked she doors she won't run away she can watch tv and mm-hmm. she has freedom to be in the house. And he's like, yeah, okay, fine. And yeah, then in on, turn, she won't ever betray him. She'll always love him or something. Yeah, because early on, like, in her early days of captivity, you know, like, Marilia's not shown up yet until she's she's been there for a certain amount of time. I'm not sure, but... It, After he's completely a, done the transition, done basically. Mm-hmm. And he basically tells Marilia he's a, she's a patient that could be a danger and needs, like, help. And they like they send her all these dresses, and she just shreds them all up and vacuums them all up in the trash. And then uh, they send her a bunch of makeup and you know cosmetics and stuff. And she she sends all the cosmetics back, I guess except one. Yeah, it was like she a keeps something that she's able to write on yeah, the wall the, with. Yeah, it was like an eyeliner pen or something, and she writes all over the walls. The date. She like asks her what day it is, so she can figure out like keep track of how long she's been there or whatever. And then uh, it fast forward like it. At some point, it says like present day. Yeah, and it's so now it's 2012, and uh, find out it's been six years since she was abducted. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 2006 she was abducted, and now it's been six years, and uh, I guess we're at the point now where let me see what's the what's I think I think we're at the point now where um, she's. They're gonna take her. They're gonna take her off to somewhere. Yeah, Maria's gonna just take her out to go shopping, I think. And she's kind of like, well, yeah, what if like she just first pushes? Out. Yeah, she's like, what if she just pushes me over and runs? And he's like, she won't. She promised. Yeah, me. so she she packs a gun though because she does not trust this yeah. scenario. And then uh, something unexpected happens where um, uh, the the other surgeon who uh, who worked with uh, uh, Doctor Ludgard on the sex chains operation shows up at the house starts talking about how they want it it doesn't really matter but he starts talking about how they, they want to use his house as the, you know he's got this he uses his house as a lab or whatever and they want to be able to use it and he shuts them down really quick and then the guy doesn't really go away and he has this newspaper article that's showing that that guy that they did the sex chains operation on has been missing since 2006 and his mother's looking for him desperately and they think that he just wrecked his, wrecked his bike and his body will washed into the ocean but she's she still thinks he's alive and out there and so this this guy's starting to put things together and he accuses robert and and uh robert pulls out a gun well before that though there's a funny not necessarily funny but i was a little humorous he's like no he made his decisions he put on a lot of bulk and he's out in la doing porn making a lot of money living a good life and it's like okay yeah 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 he makes it seem like he's just he he, he doesn't want to be discovered because he doesn't want his mom to see yeah. What he's doing now or whatever. And then but I he think pulls, the guy, pulls yeah, a gun like... on him and and at the at like the exact right moment, uh Vera walks through the door all made up and everything with this brand new dress. And um and she, and she says, Are you talking about me? I'm I'm here of my own free will. I'm I've always been a woman, I'm not Vincente, I'm I i do not know what you're talking about. Yeah, I'm Vera. And she yeah, goes and like Vera. sits Vera on Antonio Cruz. Bandera's lap, and the guy kind of kisses just him. Like, yeah, and the guy's like, "Oh, well, so he's fuck. like, yeah." He walks out like, "Okay, I guess," but it, like you can tell he's not completely convinced. And uh, and so I guess I can't remember if I'm leaving anything out here, but I, but later on that night, um, they go to have sex again, and she she says, uh, you know, he says, "Does it still hurt?" And, and she says, "Yeah, a little, but." Uh, you know, he's like, just from, you know, from the other night, or she says, no, it's what, she says, you know what, I, ha- I have some, like, lubricating cream uh, that I that I just bought while I was out, it's in my, my in my purse, 
and she looks through all these bags and can't find it. She's like, oh, it's down, it's downstairs. I, I'll, I'll run and get it. So she goes downstairs, grabs the cream and a gun, and things happen pretty quick from here. She, yep. she goes back upstairs, throws in the lubricating cream, shows that he has a gun, and uh, you know he's like, he's like, you promised, <laughs> right? <laughs> Immediately shoots <laughs> him in the chest. I'm thinking like, yeah, yeah, she promised because she's a captive. Yeah, I mean like, she's gonna, she can break a promise. But they did really so kind of like, make it seem like there was some kind of Stockholm syndrome going on. Like maybe, she, yeah, she, she was doing a good, she was doing a good job of convincing him for sure. Uh, but yeah, so she shoots him right away, and then the gunshot wakes up Marilia. Uh, she comes upstairs with her own gun and is is looking around for. She kind of she sees sees her son dead there. She knows what's probably probably about to happen, but she's looking around for her everywhere, and she's under the bed. Shoots her, and her la- her last words are, "I knew it." Yeah. And then, um, and so so now both of those people are dead. She takes off whatever bloody clothes, whatever, and uh, and she... it cuts ahead like. Oh, what were you gonna say? Oh, I was gonna say she goes and puts on a dress, and then it cuts ahead to her like walking into her mother's shop. Yeah, and like her, her mother obviously doesn't recognize her. Well, neither of them recognize her. And uh, the uh, Christina or Christine goes up to, you know, see if she can help her with the dress or whatever. And she just immediately says, like, I'm, I gotta tell you, I've, I've, I'm Vincent A. I was, ca- I was held captive. They gave me a sex change operation against my will. This is me. And she says some things to like prove that it's her. Like, yeah, she talks about that dress again. How she was like, if you like it so much, yeah. why don't you wear it? And she was like, that was there was only the two of us at that conversation, like kind of solidifying so the, like only i could know this me and you so the mom the mom is like is something wrong and she comes over and uh and they can't even speak they're like crying and everything and she and uh at the end she just says i'm vincente and the credits roll like that's the end of the movie mm-hmm. but man what i mean what a crazy way to get revenge on somebody and what a crazy like twisted little st- i mean it starts off where you just you're just like i guess this guy you know invented the super skin and he's famous for it and he's testing it on the person but we don't know who the person is yeah i didn't know where it was gonna go but i didn't either and it really went didn't know it was gonna be a revenge movie slash yeah it went in a wild direction because like you know obviously vincente I, I i don't think he intended on doing anything violent towards that girl it just he thought the situation was something it wasn't and then he got the ultimate revenge taken upon him. I mean, obviously hitting her was a great, you know, was a yeah. Thing but he was do, just right? trying to stop her from biting his mouth. Like he could have gone further after knocking her out, is my thought. And but instead, he just redressed her and left because, like, he realized. Yeah, you're. I think you are supposed to feel sympathy for him, even though it is a com- complicated, conflicting scenario. Yeah. And he, and it's it's kind of one of those things where, like, even though something wrong happened that night, like, the punishment is crazy. Oh yeah. For you know. Um, so you you kind of feel you're conflicted about the the doctor here. I mean, or I was anyway, because he's kind of the villain. But I would say so. But I mean, even Maria, Mari, Mariella says like when uh, Zeko shows up when she's telling Vera about the two kids, she was like, both of my sons were born insane. They're just you know brought up in different environments. Two different types of insane. Yeah. But she's she's like it's in my gut. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that yeah, I think that's accurate. I mean, I think they're two two flavors of insanity you know he antonio Banderas' character obviously uh you know obviously he took everything to the to the extreme i mean in 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 seeking out you know in missing his wife and everything he like created her out of his enemy yeah it's a really uh it's a really thought-provoking little experiment and it and you know as much as i as, as much as i did like asteroid city that we just watched this is kind of what i'm talking about where like this gives you something to chew on afterwards there's like yeah. a little bit more lingering story here that like asks some interesting questions and brings up some interesting philosophical uh problems so um yeah i recommend the heck out of this movie super <laughs> yeah. super good what I'd... would you what would what, what would you rate this thing man i give it like an eight and a half it was a really good movie it like it i didn't expect a lot of what happened to happen and even when i was like oh when we did find out what happened like like i was saying i was thinking maybe the daughter didn't die and he just pronounced her dead and gave her all this stuff to make her look like a mother like it, it did a really good job of like not letting you know what was going on until it wanted you to know and i'm glad it didn't in this case i can handle a bleak ending but i'm glad it didn't end where there's like 
you know, nothing ever goes right for her. Like it just yeah. like it ends with her death or something like that. Like it, it, you know, she finally got uh, got her revenge at the end, got away, and and got to reconnect with her. It's just sad that like with her got a and everything. forced sex change operation on you, and now you got to live your life out as a woman. I mean, I guess so you could crazy. Yeah, you kind of, yeah you kind of kind of stuck stuck that way. Wild wild movie. But at least at least alive, but uh, I yeah okay. I mean, watch... you said eight and a half. Yeah, I think I think I'd I think I'd go ahead and give it a nine. Yeah, uh, yeah, excellent. And I would definitely, you know, and I, I want to like, watch more movies by this director as well after watching this one. Yeah, for sure. And a lot of these, a lot of his movies are on our lists, but uh, it seems like every movie that he comes out with has like really high uh, reviews, and I kind of trust it at this point because I can't find a whole lot of flaws to pick out in this movie. The acting is excellent, especially from. Uh, Antonio Banderas and and uh, Elena Anaya, but uh, yeah, really good one. Uh, yeah, I guess unless you have anything else to add to that, no. Uh, yeah, uh, so, um, well, we haven't picked another movie yet. Oh shoot! Yeah, we'll, be, we'll do that. <laughs> It'll be a surprise. It'll be a well, surprise. Well, we are. What are doesn't Indiana Jones come out this weekend? Aren't we seeing that? Oh, the next thing we're seeing is Indiana Jones. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Which I'm going to rewatch at least the original three before we go see this new one. So I watched uh, I've watched the first and second one recently enough. I think I might. I, I've never seen the third Indiana Jones movie. It's the okay. only one I'm missing. So I'm going to watch the third one. And I might rewatch Kingdom of the Crystal Skull just for, for comparison's sake. But I don't think that one's like as, as important. But uh, yeah. But I do want to have a little bit of Indiana Jones lore fresh on the mind going into this, so we'll see how it goes. But yeah, so Indiana Jones is next. Not no surprise yet. We'll pick a movie between then, between now and then. <laughs> but uh, yeah, if you guys like this, uh, hit like below uh, for sure. Comment if you if you've seen this movie or any other movies by this director. Uh, I don't know what genre to call this movie. So psychological you know, I say, thriller, like, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, if you have any psychological thrillers that you recommend or like off kilter, off beat movies like this, you recommend uh, comment below. Let us know. And uh, if you got something out of this, share it with your friends and hit subscribe so you know when we're coming out with new videos. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time. We'll see you.